All right, since we're going to be talking about how to get smarter in this video, look at this puzzle right here. Now, the point of this puzzle is you're supposed to basically take out two matches, only two matches, so that the equation is right. So I'll let you think about it for the whole video, and then by the end of it, I'll reveal to you what to do. <laughs> but Habibi, I found 10 powerful Islamic ways to be smarter, and in this video, I'll be revealing those 10 ways for you. So you know what? I'm not gonna waste a single minute. I'm just gonna get straight to it. Now listen, whenever I talk about this, I always get hate, but Habibi, like, I don't get it. Like this right here, for me at least, it helped me in my life like so much. Raw milk, raw milk. Did you know raw milk in Canada, it's illegal to sell it. I don't know why they made it illegal. In the US, you have to have like a license, but in Canada, you can't even sell it. Unless like you actually own like a cow, then you can take it. But this right here, like I'm not understanding, but the governments are so against raw milk. So much so to the point that if you look at even Paul Salad, you know, even though like I don't like this guy so much, but he's still at times, right? He's like this podcast on raw milk was removed from YouTube for medical misinformation. Habibi, how is it medical misinformation? I sat down with the founder of Raw Farm, which I like, to talk about the incredibly protective effects of raw milk against all these diseases, which is all true. And then you're telling me we're allowed to eat or drink this thing called Fruit Loops, but we're not allowed to drink raw milk? Like, what is this insanity? And so some people believe it's like, oh, like, why, why are they trying to ban raw milk? Well, it's because less nutrition, you basically get a weaker population. Yo, this this video better not get banned because I'm talking about raw milk. So here's the thing, if you look at the difference between raw milk and just like the normal milk that you find in the stores, like the pasteurized milk, well, if you look at raw milk, it has all these nutrients and enzymes within it. But then if you look at the pasteurized milk, all of these are either reduced or just completely destroyed. Like it has, it has no whey protein in it. It has no enzymes. Your zinc is just reduced. Vitamin C is just gone. So just today, actually, I woke up from the morning and I was like, what should I eat? And so the first thing that popped into my brain is like the diet of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to actually drink raw milk. Because if you look at the ahadith, he would say that when he's drinking milk, he likes to go and just rinse his mouth because he doesn't like the fat to stay in his mouth. And so before I was like, like when I used to drink the conventional pasteurized milk, I'm like, there is no fat. And there is no fat, by the way, in the pasteurized milk. I'm like, nothing stays in my mouth. But then when I started drinking raw milk, I'm like, now I get it. Like, now I get why he goes and rinses his mouth because he's actually drinking raw milk. As soon as it comes out of the cow, he just drinks it. That's the normal way of drinking milk. And so I decided, I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to be drinking raw milk. On top of that, dates. So raw milk and dates for breakfast. And Habibi, like when I tell you the energy I felt in that morning was crazy. So the first thing that happened, I drank the milk, a glass, like a cup of milk. And then I ate like three dates or like five dates or something. And the first thing that happened is that I just went upstairs and I had to, bro, I got like the fastest and the biggest poop of my life. But then after that, bro, after that, it just felt like, like just testosterone was running through my body. Like energy was just running through my body. And I had so much energy. Like I, I didn't even need to inject caffeine into me, like Red Bull or coffee, just because the energy was just, it was so pure. Now I'm telling you, raw milk is going to increase your intelligence, is going to make you smarter, just because Muhammad Sassan himself used to actually say that. So he used to also say like milk wipes away heat from the heart, just as the finger wipes away sweat from the forehead, I believe. It just doesn't continue it here, but it actually does feel like that. Like when I'm drinking it, you also feel like your heart is becoming cleansed as well, which is so beautiful. So here it says this blend of dates and milk produces energy to the mind to think well and takes away toxins out of the body. There you go, Habibi. I can end the video right now and just tell you it's like raw milk and dates. <laughs> it's the best breakfast to have. So there are actually a hadith that say it's like Muhammad Hassan used to say, like just drinking raw milk, it increases your intelligence. So raw milk is the number one just because it's the most powerful thing. But yeah, man, this video better not get banned. It better not get demonetized just because I'm talking about this beautiful, this beautiful thing that Allah gave us, man. But anyway, so the next thing to do to increase your intelligence according to Islam is this dua. It's called Rabbi Zidni Alman Nafi'an. So the way you say it is once again, Rabbi Zidni Alman Nafi'an. So four words. Now listen, some of you guys might just be like, well, it's just you saying words. Like it's not really going to affect you. But let me tell you, Anytime I make this dua, Habibi, anytime I make it, I always notice that throughout the day, I always get like knowledge that no one else has access to. Like I'm telling you, it's like, for example, raw milk. How many, what's the percentage of the population on earth or even just like in Canada or the US know that raw milk is more beneficial for you than just normal milk? How many people know that? Like I had to go through some deep research to understand that. And then I had to go through like my own experimental like things that I'm trying on my body as like a guinea pig 
in order to know that it's actually very helpful. By the way, I've actually been drinking rum milk for two years now, and I'm still alive. I haven't died once. But I'm telling you, anytime I say this dua, I always get crazy knowledge. Like just some of the knowledge that I got was that the direction that you face determines if you're going to be getting good insights or good thoughts compared to like other directions. So like if you face a certain direction, you'll become smarter, you'll get more wealth, you're, you'll become healthier. And then if you face like another direction, like east, west, north, and all that stuff, if you face another direction, then you just guarantee yourself that you're going to be sick. And I made like a whole course about that in the Discord, by the way, which is beautiful. But I'm telling you, anytime I say this dua, anytime I say it, I always get new knowledge. So I always notice that like I just become smarter. So if you're wondering, it's like, how do I know a lot of stuff about a lot of things? Well, it's just because of this dua. I always say it, but say it with intention. So as you're saying it right now, literally say it with intention. And then you'll see throughout the day, you'll notice some new things, by the way. All right, so the third way to increase to become smarter is read, man. Read. You know, in the Quran, like the first ayah that was revealed, it's literally called read. The first word, read. Now, some of you guys are going to be like, well, what am I supposed to read? Habibi, read anything, just anything. Like, even if you're sitting down reading a magazine, that's not bad, that's good. Because when you're reading, like, you're training your mind to become better at thinking and to become better at visualizing. So just, it's like, it's almost like you're exercising your mind, just like when you go to the gym and you're exercising your body. So reading is so powerful. And you'll notice there, there's a huge difference between someone that reads and then someone that doesn't. You'll talk to two people, one reads, one doesn't, and there's a huge difference. The one that doesn't read, their brain is shrinking. The one that reads, their brain always grows every single day. So reading is actually powerful. It's literally the first ayah in the whole Quran. But anyway, so the fourth thing to do to become smarter is living with taqwa. Now, a lot of you guys, for some reason, don't even talk about this. Now, when I say living with taqwa, it doesn't mean like being, being scared of your creator. That's not what it means. Living with taqwa, it means that every single moment that passes, so every moment, like now is the next moment. Now is the next moment. It's always like a new moment, right? It's like the spotlight effect. It's like you're here and there's like a spotlight that opens and then it closes. And then opens and closes. Open. Basically, every moment is new. So it's living in every moment with a mindset that Allah is watching me. So you live your whole day knowing that Allah is watching you in every moment. Now what you'll notice is that when you're going to start living this way, that's when the past and the future for you won't exist because in reality, the past and the future is just things that we make up in the mind. And then we start believing in it. But then when you start living with taqwa, with every moment, as if like Allah is watching you right now, which is true, then you'll notice like all the energy in your brain that you usually use to think of the past and the future, you'll take all that energy and just present it in the present moment. You'll use it in the present moment. And just imagine it's like there's so much energy within your body that you've used to think of the past. All these emotions that are attached to the past or even the future but then when you release yourself from all these like like these energy blockages within your within your mind within your body and then you live with taqwa you'll notice there's so much more energy within you there's so much more intelligence within you so much so to the point that you won't even know that this thing has been here all along and so for me ever since i put it into my brain that i need to live with taqwa it's almost like anything that you do it always works like for example let's just say you have a problem like a simple problem let's just say it's like the car you need to take it to like the dealer because the car got broken, right? Most people would be like, no, I have to go on like the Google, search up for a dealer, call them, blah, 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 do the payment, all these all these minute things that you're thinking of. But then when you're living with taqwa, you know it's like Allah is watching me right now and that's the only thing I'm aware of. So then when you go and you take your car, all you're going to do is just, is just get up, go in the car, bring it and that's it. It's almost like, you know when you go to like the, the mailbox and they're telling you it's like there's a parcel they need to go and pick up? Like, when you go and do that, what do you do? You just go and do it without thinking. You don't think anymore. You're just doing, no thinking. Now, you take that mindset and you bring it to things like problems that are bigger. And so when you live through this mindset, you'll notice that it's almost like you're being carried by something greater than you. It's like you're a baby and you're being carried by something greater than you compared to just you literally sitting down and always being worried about the future. It's like, what's going to happen in the future? What am I going to do when this happens and all that stuff? None of these thoughts come to you anymore. It's like, for example, if you get out of the house and you need to go on campus and you're trying to catch the bus, before, when you're not living with taqwa, when you're not living in the present moment, before, you're just going to be like, well, I got to check the time. I got to know, like, when is it exactly going to come? Where's the location? Where's this? Where's that? But if you're living with taqwa, you don't worry about anything. All you do is just, all you do is just do. That's all you do. You just get out of the house, no thinking, because you're present. You go back to the bus station because you're present. You don't think anymore. And then almost always what's going to happen is that the bus is always going to come exactly 
when you need it. And this is always going to happen because now you're living from a place where you're not trusting your, your mind anymore. You're just trusting Allah and then whatever that happens in the moment is always going to be perfect. It's always going to be for your benefit. So at this point, it's almost like you're just like, I'm so excited for the next moment. Like I just wonder what's going to happen in the next moment because now you're not predicting. You're not predicting anymore. You're just living. You're just flowing. And that's the Habibi. That's that's exactly how you live with taqwa. And what did Allah say about living with taqwa? Allah says that whoever lives with taqwa, Allah is going to find him a way out out of any problem. So think about it. If you're in a problem right now, there is a reason for that because you're not living with taqwa. You're not living with God consciousness. So always be aware that God is like you're conscious of him. You're conscious of God. You're knowing that Allah is always watching you right now. But anyway, so the fifth one is memorizing the Quran. Habibi, just memorizing in general is so powerful. If you just memorize things, your brain is going to become more powerful. Like, you do understand back in the day, people used to be smarter than the people of right now. Why is that? Back in the day, there were no phones, right? Like, there were phones, but it's like, you don't save people's phones. So what people used to do is that they would remember everybody else's phones. They would remember their phone numbers. So people had to use their mind a lot. They had to memorize things a lot, so they were smarter. Nowadays, we're all just, just a bunch of dum-dums. We don't memorize anything. I mean, honestly, I'm guilty of this too. I don't have like such a big memory. But if you just go and like, if you just try to memorize the Quran, you'll notice that your brain is almost like it's going to expand. It's going to become smarter. You, you'll actually realize that there's like so much more memory within your brain. Your your brain is not like like 5 gigabytes max, bro. Your brain is like at least, at least more than like 100 terabytes. Not even gigabytes, terabytes. So here's the thing, just, just, just sit down, <laughs> memorize the Quran, that's it. So the next one is staying away from sins. Habib is staying away from things like alcohol, staying away from things like porn, staying away from things like having sex with a girl that's, that you're not even married with, just staying away from all the sins, like backbiting, like getting angry at someone, ruining their feelings, just staying away from sins, man. When you stay away from sins, once again, like your brain is not gonna, it's not gonna live life through guilt. It's not going to live life through shame. And then when you're not exposed to all these like negative emotions, then you have you have energy to use for more productive things. Like Habibi, do you know why people people usually get sick? Usually they get like inflammation within the body without even without even like anything external, without anything ex external happening to them. Do you know why? It's because these people they go through so much sins to the point that the emotion, the default emotion that they feel throughout the day is like guilt or shame or hatred. Or jealousy, when you put your heart, when you expose your heart to these feelings, it's going to show on your body. You'll become sicker because your brain, your brain uses all the energy to heal like this negative thing that's happening within you, which is the feeling, the, the emotion, like the jealousy or the hatred. And so when your brain is putting all this like energy in your body to heal you, what's left in the brain? What energy is left in the brain? That's why most of you guys are always so tired. Your brain doesn't have any more like energy to, to be smart. But then when you release these things, when you stop sinning, because remember, sins, you can think of it as like blocked emotions. Because whenever you sin, you always get like emo like blockages within your, within your body that are all just emotional. And almost always, it's just negative emotions. So when you stop sinning, you'll you'll release some of these emotions. And then when you go through istighfar and toba, like repentance, you'll release these blockages. And you'll notice, bro, so much more energy is going to come to the brain. You'll, you'll become so much more smarter, man. But anyway, so the next one, Number seven is playing smart games. Now look, if you go on Google right now and you search up, is chess haram? It's going to tell you that, yeah, like, lots of sheikhs say it's haram, but then some sheikhs say it's halal. Their, their reasoning is like, chess is haram because it's going to move you away from like remembering Allah. It's going to make you miss salah. It's going to, like, if you gamble, it's haram. Habibi, when you're scrolling on your phone the whole day, are you not doing those exact two things? Like you're you're not you're not remembering a lot anymore, and you're missing your salah. So scrolling on your phone is haram if it's leading to such things. But chess, bro, chess is just a game. Chess is just a game. Like if you're playing video games, and then you miss your salah, your video games are haram. But chess is just a game, bro. So don't be telling me it's like no, bro. Chess is haram and stuff like that. It's only haram if you're using it in the in the negative sense. But then if you're using if you're playing chess to strengthen your mind, to strengthen your memory. To strengthen the ability to foresee the future and the ability to like to like think ahead and to strategize, then how is that haram? So playing smart games. So another smart game is basically this right here. I told you guys, you take away two matches right here, and then this would become true. So I'll reveal the answer to you right now. If you look at it right here, right? So eight and five. If you just take away this this match right here, like this this match right here, 
What's going to happen is that this is going to become a 6, right? 6 minus 5 is not 7. So if you just take away this other match right here, it's going to become 1. So 6 minus 5 is 1. <laughs> I mean, if you're just playing smart games like this, it's going to strengthen your mind because it makes you think. It makes you use different neurons in your brain that you haven't used otherwise. So in terms of chess, I mean, I mean, chess is not it's not haram. But if you're going to be playing chess and then you're, you're missing your salah, you're like, you don't even remember Allah anymore, then it's haram. If you're gambling also, then it's haram. But who is doing that now? You can take that logic and apply it to anything. So just play it in the halal way. That's it. Now the eighth one is waking up for tahajjud and fajr. So you do know like Muhammad he actually made a dua that says that, I forgot what it was word for word, but it was asking Allah to bless this nation, this Muslim nation, at the time of Fajr. So if you have important things to do, if you just do it at the time of Fajr, which is just as soon as the sun is about to come up, or like when you pray Fajr, you'll notice that that's the time when you have the most barakah, when you have the most blessings, and when you have the most like, you could say like ROI. And also just waking up for tahajjud in of itself, like before Fajr, is so powerful. Like it's the most blessed time of the entire day. The most blessed time, bro. So just waking up, praying and then when you finish the prayer when you finish the fajr prayer you don't go to sleep but you just go and you do your work you go and you do anything that's important that you have to do throughout the day that's when you'll notice it's like automatically you just you just like you are a lot smarter during those times you are the most productive during those times so take advantage of these times but anyway so the ninth one is just bro it's stop eating unnatural things like these seed oils candy all these like sodas and stuff like that just stop eating those things and you know what i usually say i usually say it's like ice cream is healthy but i only say that just because it sounds it sounds like a bit controversial right because who's gonna say ice cream is healthy whenever i say it to my friends they're like bro what are you talking about it's not healthy but it actually is so when i say stop eating unnatural things like stop listen look at the ingredient of the thing and then stop eating anything that has bad ingredients because remember it's not the food that's bad it's the ingredients like don't tell me a burger is unhealthy if the ingredients within the burger are healthy if you go and eat mcdonald's yeah that's unhealthy but then if you eat a burger that you made homemade and then like the oils that the burger contains is like coconut oil or like ghee like butter how is how is that burger bad it's just meat and it has healthy fats like animal fats that's not bad that's actually good for you but then if you're eating burger like filled with seed oils like canola oil vegetable oil all that stuff all those things are going to make you so, like, it's going to make you so dumb, bro. If you look at people, the, like, the fat people, right? When they have this thing, I forgot, it's like cellulite. When they have cellulite on their body, it's because of the seed oils. Seed oil is not made for humans. It's made for, bro, it's actually made for cars. Fuel for cars, not for you. You're not a car. So stop eating unnatural things. Like, look at the diet of Muhammad Sallallahu and just basically follow that diet. And his diet was like the best diet. It was anything that's within nature. Like raw milk, he used to eat or drink raw milk. Meat, he used to also eat meat. Obviously halal meat. Like fruits, he used to eat fruits. Bread, he used to eat bread. But not like the bread that's like unnatural nowadays. Every bread nowadays that has seed oils. I was like, why is that, man? But then when you create bread homemade with, with no horrible ingredients, then it's good. It's not bad for you. You can eat it. Even though people say, oh, but that's carbs. It doesn't matter, bro. The ingredients are healthy. Because it's not the food, it's the ingredients. So just look at the diet of Muhammad and just eat that. Look, for example, look at this. Honey. Bro, honey is so good. But when you're eating honey, listen, when you eat honey, don't just go to the grocery store and just pick any honey. Because nowadays, honey is just basically candy. Go to a farm, not a grocery store, a farm, and get their honey. Because their honey is unpasteurized, it's not heated. It's like it comes raw. And by the way, bro, do everything raw. Like milk, raw milk, honey. Raw honey. Babies. Raw babies. <laughs> but anyway, so the last thing to do to become smarter is just repetition, man. Repetition. Because this, this is exactly how Muslims, they were memorizing the Quran. It's just through repetition. If you read a book and then you finished it, go read the book again. You'll notice that when you go and read a book that you've read before, you'll get so much more gems. You'll actually get things that you never... You were never aware of from the the first time you actually read it. Like for me, bro, I don't I don't really have a lot of books to read. I don't read a bunch of books. I just read the same books over and over again. Because you don't mean you don't need a bunch of information. You just need the same information, but like reminded from them. When you get reminded, you get more benefit. So repetition, man. If you're trying to learn something, just repetition. It's gonna make you a lot smarter. But anyway, I hope this video was helpful. These are 10 powerful Islamic ways to be smarter. Most of these like for example, raw milk, straight from the sunnah, saying this dua, straight from the sunnah, 
reading straight from Quran, this one living with taqwa straight from the Quran, memorizing the Quran, well that is the Quran right, staying away from sins, obviously the Quran, playing smart games, now this one maybe you could say it's like, I mean, I don't know, but just just playing things that are smart, like you don't need to, you don't need to take everything so seriously bro, just playing things that make you smarter is helpful for you, and chess is not haram, if you're not gambling, if you're not wasting time, if you're not missing salah, how is it haram? Waking up for tahajjud, straight from the Quran and the sunnah, and then this one eating unnatural things, stopping that, is straight from the sunnah too, and this one repetition, I mean, this is just how people memorize the Quran, so I hope this video was helpful, if this video was helpful, maybe just let me know.